It's James Calm, your half-assed, fully masked reporter. And we are back on the Bowery. We're gonna do what we do here. Shout out to our friends on the Baltic coast of Germany. Just a few miles from the island of Bornholm. Our friends in Texas. Collectors in Tampa. We're gonna run into the hole. Try to get a viewing of an exhibition titled Cubed? Something like that. Stay tuned. I go in? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Okay, well, that was interesting. Okay, here's our COVID station. Uh, the hand sanitizer does smell like vodka. I'll make a quick walk around this. So the title of the show is Cubed. Okay, you can pause there if you want to read the people that are included here. It was interesting, I just pedaled in from Brooklyn and uh, it's raining in Brooklyn. And as I was crossing the bridge, it got to, it was raining even harder. And then strangely, when I came out down into Manhattan, uh, it stopped raining. The other thing that's uh, nice about this is that uh, this is the first opening I've gone to in six months. Gosh, it's half a year. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see how they handle this, how people do the social distancing. Oh, I guess I should have put some hand sanitizer on. I'm touching the, the guide here. Okay, this is a piece by Andreas Angela Dickus, titled Kion 2020, foam blocks, digitally printed vinyl upholstery. I uh, saw the press release for this. They were talking about uh, abstraction and some of the people that they work with. And evidently, I think that they've had a uh, kind of a series of shows dealing with abstraction, but those were all two-dimensional, and so they were sort of saying the idea of the cube is multiplying the edges of your form. It's six inches on one side and six inches on the other side, then you expand it out and it's suddenly it's a cube. Okay, these are pieces by Irina Ojovin. And these black ones are Samirza Gestolsa, and then they're numbered. Uh, it's not like you can really differentiate from the reproductions. shows a lot of work that's kind of uh, based on cartoons, pop art, uh, and uh, technology. They also have a part of the program that features a lot of uh, abstract kind of formalism, which I would say this is, this is titled, again, this is Sarmiza Gastusa number 65 oil and lacquer on canvas this is 19 by 16 inches and uh, 
gosh, I'm kind of thinking that the... This makes me think of a couple of painters. Susan Freecon is one. And uh, Nathalie Provosti is another one that's doing these kinds of formalistic pieces. And a lot of the contrasts you get are very, very subtle. And a lot of times it's just the variations of the surface. So you've got parts that are very dry against a very glossy. Something that looks like it's black when you get up a little closer, you notice there's a little tinge of violet in there. is a piece by Lila Rose called Seabed 2020 full muslin muslin fabric dye and plywood yes, I like the uh, you know the subtlety of the the dyed fabric and uh, okay, the central form kind of makes me think of a princess phone but uh, it's nice the way that uh, this kind of folds over here this piece is 72 by 24 by 13 I've also uh, written a few things recently about what's happening on the Bowery. This is Robert Moreland. Tall black rectangle. Canvas on wood panel with acrylic paint, tacks, and leather hinges. getting back to normal being as rude as always uh, I don't know but from what I've seen I think this piece might be a kind of a uh, good example of some of the themes of the show it's talking about just the abstract formalism but also the uh, Playing with the idea of the brush stroke, the stretched canvas, the fabric. a uh, suite of work here by Thomas Trum. It's almost like it was this. Kind of uh, technically interesting. It's titled Two Red Lines 10 2020. Atomized enamel on acrylic primed canvas. Oh, that looks like uh, paper to me. Again, we've got a very kind of a formalistic uh, approach. It actually looks like it's done with the squeegee and uh, scraping out your lines and then making your little turns that can become circles. It's also atomized enamel. And it says on acrylic prime canvas, 42, 41 by 32 inches. Painting by 
Thomas. This is titled One Orange Line. Okay. I kind of get it, so maybe if you got a big squeegee or a big brush, and you start out at one corner, slide it across, come down, make your little circular move there, repeat it, come back down to another circle underneath. It's kind of like uh, giant calligraphy. This is by Robert Moreland. Narrow yellow rectangle 2020. Canvas on wood panel with acrylic paint, tacks, and leather hinges. Okay, so we've uh, gotten a show of Robert's work on file probably about, I don't know, five years ago at this point, I think. No and I like the way that Robert uh, works with the picture plane, bends it, uh, breaks it, folds it. This is Luke Diorio, Untitled 2020, Oil on Canvas Over Panel. Well, okay, so they're calling this cubed, but uh, I would also say that a lot of the works are dealing with the idea of the picture plane and also the fabric, the canvas that is stretched over the picture plane, kind of the physical property of all that. Uh, getting back to what I was saying about writing some things on the Bowery, about what's happening on the Bowery. Uh, well, as you know, the COVID problem has uh, really been uh, a <clears throat> tough time for New Yorkers and uh, a lot of people could say it was the, well, a lot of the responsibility lies on the mayor, Mayor Del Blasio, but uh, the Bowery is probably one of the places where it's all become extremely visible. Uh, you can check some of my other postings where I've just gone around like Ply Plywood City shows you what was happening here after the riots. This is by Luke Murphy, titled Pixels Stream Speed 2019, LED matrix panels, MDF panels, mini PC driver cards, power supplies, cable software, 35 by 25 by 25. Well, yeah, the... Uh, the electronic gear here is probably almost as interesting as the uh, little LED light displays on the inside. I think we've probably seen some of Luke's work at Canada. Let me go check the files. I think one of the other things that I was really interested in was um, seeing how people are acting in the uh, the new the age of COVID, with all of the new protocols, okay, this is by Clinton King. Valium Thor 2020 oil on linen. I think a lot of, I wouldn't say a lot, but some of the work that uh, is exhibited here at the whole 
is a kind of uh, a melding of digital art, handmade painting, things that try to kind of mush those two realms together. And uh, I don't know from a distance this looks like somebody's uh, complicated computer generated or Photoshop generated color thing up close you realize this is all hand painted. Some more by Clinton King. It's titled Nine Gates 2020 Oil on Linen 64 by 50 inches. Okay, so there are aspects of this that relates to brand new computer technology. Like I was saying, Photoshop, some of these other programs. There's also an aspect of this that relates to uh, Ferdinand Liget, which is actually appropriate. Ferdinand Liget had a studio when he left Europe and came and stayed in New York for, I don't know, five or six years during the war. He actually had a studio about four blocks down the Bowery from here, maybe less. This is the same building that Mark Rothko, I think, uh, painted the Seagram mural, Seagram building murals in, 222 Bowery. Mathematics 64 by 50 oil on linen Well, I uh, <laughs> I remember Maybe I should say I read about it in a history book uh, About an art movement that was known as photorealism and one of the conceptual goals was to try to make paintings that uh, came as close to photographic realism or naturalism as they could get, although they all end ended up fudging it because they would do, do things like have no depth of field, they would have, everything would be totally in focus. Uh, in a certain way, this is almost kind of a similar kind of a conception except that it's not photographs but this computer screen that they're copying this is by Jean Nagia Wildlife refuge, refuge number three, 2017 acrylic on canvas, 61 by 108 inches. Okay, so we've got a kind of a nice pointless pattern. And of course, this makes me think about the uh, Aboriginal paintings that have been coming out of Australia and have become very popular in the last, uh, oh, 20 years. This is by Johnny Nisha, N-I-E-S-C-H-E. Adams and Code Violet 2020 aluminum wood auto lac and violet. Okay, I've seen 
Johnny's worked before, and this always creates a problem for my focus function on the camera. Because, unfortunately, things never get into focus. So this is, kind of makes me think of a James Terrell piece where you're dealing a lot with light and the illusion of light. This almost seems like it's got uh, two screens that you're looking through there. Uh-oh. That puppy has had too much to drink. Uh-oh. Very nice way to uh, experience the color. More Johnny Nisha. Nisha. This is Adams and Code Scarlet 2020. Aluminum wood, auto lac, and violet. I don't know whether I can capture the uh, the strange shimmering moray qualities of this. this is 63 by 48. Kind of like a uh, Rothko that just keeps keeps vibrating. Blank Drifter 2019 acrylic on canvas 52 by 42. Well, so uh, New York has been in a lockdown or semi lockdown state now for, uh, as I said, six months. And uh, well, they've allowed the restaurants to open, but only for outside dining. And uh, they were saying that maybe by the end of the month they'll start letting the restaurants open 25% for indoor dining. And in a way, uh, the fact that uh, the hole has got an opening and got some people here, I guess, is a kind of a analogous situation. Looking at Pamela's painting here, I think this is kind of nice. A lot of masking tape involved, but uh, I like the way the lines kind of thin out. The Morris code dot dot dash dash almost has a uh, sense of a landscape. I have it. Eric Peterson. for two and a half hours like that. Okay, we'll uh, scan the work in the project room. This is more like uh, straight ahead painting. Got some works here by Rebecca Ward. It's titled Full Swing 2018. This is acrylic on silk. Oh, well, that's incredible. Organically, does that. 
so okay this is so sheer that you can uh, sort of see the stretcher bars behind here Well, as I said, there are a lot of people here that are not uh, exactly following the protocols. <laughs> and I guess if you're young and your number of comorbidities is down, you can uh, be a little more lax. It's more Rebecca Ward, titled White Morph 2018. This is 60 by 45 inches. So I was thinking this uh, kind of transparent silk reminds me of a, an artist that used to show at Mary Boone's back in the early 80s with Gary Steffen. I can't think of his name right now. More Rebecca. Oh, I like it. Meridian 2. That was like. <laughs> Acrylic on stretched canvas. That was like. And again, this goes back to what I was talking about the uh, concentrating on the, the fabric aspect of the stretched canvas idea. Okay, so. Uh, I don't know exactly how Rebecca achieved these little strips unless she went in there and cut out the, the woof threads and only left the warp threads in there. But I like the, uh, the very subtle color thing that she's doing here using a lot of the beige of the natural cotton duck and uh, yeah normally they always tell you do not stretch your canvases on the diagonals keep the warps and the wuss at 90 degree angles <sighs> this kind of uh, very subtle pink with the salmon red is nice Christy Moran, Island in the Sky 2020, oil on linen 97 by 72. Okay, so uh, again, we've got a lot of raw, raw linen up there. Looks like Christy might be using some uh, fat squeegees or fat palette knives and uh, big brushes. So this series is all titled Madcap Swimmers, Opposing Strokes, One Through One. Two, <laughs> These are all oil on linen, 60 by 48, so that's 5 by 4 feet. Christy's using a lot of open linen. And I was thinking these have a... Kind of an 
an Asian feel. It makes me think about a uh, Japanese screen. Also, uh, Christie's got a lot of uh, kind of geometric things happening with their brush strokes and the, the striations of the brush hairs and that the way that reflects light within these dark arc forms. We will finish our little COVID-19 end of the lockdown tour looking at this piece by Christy. Double black stroke, 2020, oil and acrylic on linen, 76 by 94. the basic blue red black palette these little pod things are kind of odd oh, and I like the uh, the way that the the application of the paint doesn't completely close out your weave of the linen. So, it's been a view of Cubed here at the hole on the Bowery. The uh, first opening we've been to in the uh, fall 2020 season opener. You can like this, share, link it up to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, and reviews below. Okay, we hope that this is a sign that we're getting back to normalcy here in New York. But we do ask you to say, as always, thank you, Kate. <laughs>